fight of the night was uh, Kai Car of France and Royval, and then the um, performance of the nights went to Blahovic and Adesanya. Those guys all won fifty thousand dollars, so congratulations to them. It's going to ask you about Adesanya. Clearly, your performance of the night uh, worthy, man. Yeah. What, just what did you think about him in there tonight? Well, so much for fight of the year, but uh, <laughs> domination of the year. I mean, it was just it was weird because um, I mean, if you look at Every other fight that Costa has had, he comes out and goes after people like they own money. And, and uh, I, I, I think he landed one jab in this fight. It, it didn't try to clinch in the fence, didn't t try to put pressure, kept going back to the center of the octagon. Very weird. Yeah, it wasn't weird. I mean, do you think it was, he was in his head? Or, I mean, it was, or do you, like, was it just the antics that slowed everything down? What, what happened? You're going to have to ask him that question. I have no idea. But... You know, no matter what it was, Adesanya put on a clinic. I mean, the first three calf kicks busted up his leg. Then he, then he hit him right on the side of the knee, had a huge welt on the side of the knee. Then the shin to the eye and just absolutely dismantled him and easily won the fight. Yeah. He said he likes the idea of Jared Cannonier next if he wins. Does that sound like a good fight to you? Yeah, I mean, that's the fight if Cannonier wins. And, he and I love that about Israel. You know, he's ready for who, who's next. Who else thinks they can beat me? It's just the kid is an absolute stud tonight. Congratulations to, you know, him and Costa. They broke a bunch of records tonight, man. It's unbelievable. The, the, their, their stare down, when we, went, when we went live, their stare down was the biggest stare down ever, most viewed ever in UFC history. It beat Khabib and Connor by 1.5 million when the show started. I don't know what it's at now. That's crazy. He was chatting you up afterwards. Was that really just about weight cutting the whole time? Was that yeah, you know, two of his guys, I, you know. So, yeah, he, he was all fired up about that. Um, listen, he's not wrong, you know, but that's not our place. That's the commission that, that handles that. But he's not wrong. Take 80 or 90% of anybody's money. They're going to show up the right way. Yeah. You got a new light heavyweight champion as well. What did you think about Jan Blahovic's performance tonight? He looked awesome, man. He looked unbelievable. It's like he had a, a, a laser on that uh, kick to the body, man. That thing kept landing right in the same place and was ripping Reyes apart. And uh, I believe that was, that was a huge factor in the fight. Question. Immediately he calls out John Jones, basically. Um, can you tell us what is going on with John? If it, I mean, would he come back down as heavyweight? What's, what's up with him? Listen, you guys know as much as I know about John Jones. Um, but, yeah, I... I, I, I uh, I like that he wants to fight John, yeah. you know? He could have called out whoever the next contender is and, and whatever. The fact that, uh, you know, these guys respect Jones enough and, and the fact that, you know, they want to be the guy who beats the guy, I love it. Yeah. Got to ask you about Diego Sanchez. Um, you know, he told us coming into this fight that he's got four fights left on his deal. He wants to fight out that contract. I know you got a ton of respect for Diego Sanchez and everything yep. he's done. Are you comfortable with him fighting out four fights? I love Diego Sanchez. Um, and I, I don't know. I don't know. It's something I got to think about, and it's obviously something that I got to talk to uh, the guys about back back when we get home in the office and, and see what everybody thinks. Um, I, I want to do what's – you know, I got these guys now. You got Diego Sanchez, who fights his heart out every time he fights. He was part of Tough One. Everybody knows how I feel about those guys. Um, and, and he's just a great, great person. Then you got Cowboy, who you can say all the same things about. And, you know, as these guys start to get older and, and, and start racking up some losses, it's tough to, you know. But Diego's, Diego's like, uh, I, I want to say, I don't know for sure off the top of my head, but he's like one, you know, three out of his last five or something like that. But, um, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. It's, it's, it's the, the not fun part of this job. For sure. A couple quick ones outside tonight. Conor McGregor made waves over the last 24 hours or so talking about this. Uh, well, first of all, sharing direct messages from you. Did, yeah. that, did that upset you that he kind of shared private conversations? Listen, I've had people blowing me up left and right. Um, I mean, everybody here knows. I mean, even the ladies, this is some man code stuff. You know, you don't, you, you just, it's, it's just something you don't do. It's one of the, it's one of the dirtiest things you can do, which by the way, you know, because, uh, we were just talking about Diego Sanchez, you know, and Diego Sanchez is in there <clears throat> in a private conversation that I was having with Connor. 
when you're the number two or three ranked guy in the world and you're, you're telling me that you want to fight, but you want to fight unranked 39-year-old Diego Sanchez in a main event in Los Angeles, you know. Yeah, fair enough. How, how valid is this Pacquiao thing, though? Can you comment on that? I mean, is this a real thing that I've, could happen? I have no idea. No idea? Yeah. Listen, you guys have been asking me about Conor McGregor forever. Did, um, did, did you see Conor McGregor's tweet? Which one? Well, I think the retirement tweet? Oh, yes, I'm yes, retired. Yes. Birthday cake. I'm retired. Fair enough. Last one for me. Uh, there was a report that came out tonight. Hamza Shimeyev, obviously everybody's you know, excited about Hamza, that said either Wonder Boy or Leon Edwards uh, for December 19th. Can you give us any information on Where did that come from? Uh, Brazilian outlet, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they do that all the time. It's, uh, the Leon Ed Edwards is not true, but we, we've offered it to Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy wants to fight Leon Edwards, so we'll, we'll see how this plays out. That, it's, it's, that's completely not true. Leon Edwards is not um, uh, lined up to fight Hamzat. We were looking at Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy wants Leon, so. We're, we're nowhere on that thing. For anybody to report it, it's total fucking bullshit and typical MMA fucking silliness. Dana, when you see Paulo Costa in the first round taunting and doing all this goofy stuff, like that's all well and good to entertain people, but he's not winning the round. Do you sit there and get frustrated at a guy who's letting the other his opponent start to get a lead on him? Yeah, it doesn't frustrate me. It's just, you know... I mean, you guys know enough about the sport that if he fought the way he fights, um, look at the way he went after Yo Romero, one of the most dangerous guys ever. Um, and then he stays away, he stays on the outside, taking damage to that front leg. Then, um, then he uh, gets, when he does rush in and get him up against the cage, he backs out to the center of the cage again. Just never tried to get in the clinch. I think he only landed a jab. Didn't really throw any punches at all, only threw kicks. It was very weird. I just sat there going, holy shit. And then, and then obviously, um, you know, Adesanya just went to work, picked him apart piece by piece. Made it look really easy. You mentioned the records this fight set in terms of numbers leading up to it. Obviously, the fight itself was super anticipated. You'd promoted it as one of the greatest fights of the year, potentially. But is this also Fight Island playing a part again? Is it just something about this brand of Fight Island that just builds people's excitement? Listen, the, 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 the UFC is on fire right now. I mean, the, the records we broke tonight, we had like uh, on, uh, tons of records on social media. Social media records were, were, were off the charts, and, 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 and all the numbers that are coming in are, are massive. And... Every time we're doing fights now, it's, they're big. I mean, if you look at our social media in the last year, UFC social media has gained 8 million followers in the last year. Two and a half million since Florida. Mine has gained a million since Florida. The whole sport is, you know, it's on fire right now. We're, 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 our numbers keep going up, our, our ratings keep going up, and it's, it's all good. Is part of that because it's not just like America that's had nothing to do for the past few months. It's the whole world's been shut down. So are you getting followers from all over the world or is it just America it's building up in? Yeah, I, I think it's because, uh, you know, I didn't listen to any of the fucking bullshit from the media. And I went, you know, and, 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 and I think people liked it. And people that never watched the sport before got into it and started to watch. And, and, and the growth has been phenomenal. Um, I think that's a big part of it. Yeah. There's no, there's no, uh, it's not a coincidence that all these numbers have gone up since Florida. How, how big do you anticipate Khabib Gaethje going to be then? How, how big does what? How big is Khabib Gaethje going to be? Yeah, so the question is now, does Khabib Gaethje break the records that we broke tonight? <laughs> Uh, last one from me. Um, earlier today, Nate Diaz put out a promotional video of himself and Mazadol, obviously saying round four, wanting the rematch with, with Mazadol. Have you got any progress on that fight? No, no. Is it possible that you guys are looking at Mazadol versus Colby instead? Yeah. <laughs> is that because... It's, it's very possible. Is that just because negotiations with Nate didn't go anywhere? No, no. We, I don't even know if we talked to Nate yet. 
Um, but yeah, after the Colby fight, I mean, how do you not make that fight? That's a fight that makes sense. If, uh, the Nate Diaz rematch is going to be there no matter what happens. And actually, just one more thing. Have you heard any, any, anywhere further with Nick Diaz? No. Okay. I, I told you guys this, this last time. Okay. Go ahead, Jamal. I want to talk about Brandon Royvelle. This guy's had two UFC fights, and it looks like he's going to be fighting a top five opponent. Huge fast track, and uh, maybe he's one fight away, two fights away from a title fight. Just thoughts on this guy. Yeah. Um, fight of the night winner, awesome fight, um, awesome finish, and uh, he's an exciting kid. Yeah, I love it. I want to talk about what's next for Jan Blahovich. Is it for sure the winner of Tiago Santos and Glover Teixeira, if that fight is still going to happen, would get Jan Blahovich? Or if John Jones puts his name in the hat, would he get that opportunity over them? Yeah, that, that, those are the guys that, that are fighting for the next shot. But obviously, if John Jones wanted that fight, we wouldn't deny John Jones the, the, the opportunity. Habib was in attendance tonight. He was cornering his teammate. Was wondering what conversation, if any, you had with Habib. So I didn't see him tonight. Yeah, I didn't see him. And uh, lastly, I want to talk about Leon Edwards. We brought him up earlier. Do you think he's going to get booked for a fight in 2020? Is he turning down fights? What's his status? Um, no, we're, we're ready to book him. Uh, yeah, he'll, hopefully he'll fight this year. Hopefully. If not, he'll fight the beginning of next year, the very beginning of January or something. Any issues with visas coming to the United States, or is it, would it be here in Fight Island? Yeah, it would be anybody who's coming from out of the country that isn't easy to get into the States would fight here. Thank you. Hi, Dana. Thank you. Right here. Uh, I know there was a lot of expectations for uh, this fight, this match, Paulo Costa versus Adesanya. Are you a little disappointed? Are you disappointed uh, for what you saw today? Uh, listen, uh, when you break down a fight and you think about how, how the fight's going to go. That shouldn't have been the fight that happened tonight. It should have been a much tougher fight. But you can't be disappointed when you have somebody that's as, as talented as Adesanya is, and he comes out and imposes his will and, and literally dismantles a guy as good and as tough as Costa. You, you, you know, you don't look at the fight and go, oh, I guess Costa wasn't this or that. No, Costa is. Costa is that good, and, and he's, he's a savage, and normally, but... Uh, Adesanya shut him down tonight and absolutely put on a clinic and destroyed him. You know, you can't, you can't be upset about that. I mean, if those guys went in there and, and did nothing for five rounds, I'd be disappointed. But when a guy continues to gain more confidence every time he gets in there and just looks better and better and better and beats a guy that's that good the way that he beat him tonight, you can't be disappointed about that. And what about Paulo? What's next for him? I don't know, man. I, I, I'm sure he's uh, devastated right now, and, you know, I don't know. Uh, last You'll one have to me. ask him that question when he comes in. I will. Uh, last one for me. Uh, Sarah McMahon was going to fight here on Fight Island. Second fight that, you know, an opponent gets uh, injured. Uh, the first one is Aspen and now Raquel. Um, where do you see Sarah right now? I, I'm sure she's ready and waiting for, for a fight. Are, wait, are you saying that two of her opponents have fallen out? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know that. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. Love Sarah, and hopefully we can get her something else and, and, and get her a fight. I'm sure we can. Thank you. Okay, hello, sir, here. So Poland has a new uh, UFC champion when you add Joanna to to him and a couple of other Polish fighters, you get a pretty good fight card to put in an event in Poland. Of course, we have a, uh, like crazy times right now, but if there will be a possibility in 2021, it will be one of your priorities to, to make an event in Poland. Um, yeah, well, obviously you're as hopeful as I am for 21. <laughs> I, I keep saying I can't wait for 20 to be over and wait for 21. I don't know what I'm expecting, but uh, yeah, hopefully, the, the, you know, the, the, the world gets normal again and, uh, and, and we can go everywhere, including Poland. Okay, so uh, last week you made, made an interview for Pol Polsat Sport and you said that Joanna may fight another uh, opponent than the rematch with Weili Zhang. And I, I heard that uh, when she was informed about it uh, yesterday, she, she was surprised and she said that she will call you and she probably, she did it or not? Or not? She didn't call no, you? No, she hasn't called me. 
Okay, so but it's like confirm information that that she will need to fight uh, one more fight before a potential rematch with Willie or, or fight with uh, Rose. Yeah, yeah, she would definitely have to have another fight. Um, she, uh, you know, Ro Rose is going to get the next fight against Whaley, and then uh, we'd get Ioana another fight. Okay, and last one for me. Uh, UFC signed a new Polish uh, fighter, undefeated uh, to double case, W champion Mateusz Gamrod, and uh, Joanna Jędrzejczyk and uh, Jan Bachowicz said that they both believe that he's the new, the next uh, UFC champion from Poland. Do you heard about him, and do you have any thoughts about this guy? What's the question? Oh, the kid, yeah, that, 17, uh, yeah. 17 and 0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're excited about him. We're excited to uh, to get him in here and uh, and see what he can do. Yeah, very excited. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Hassan Abdurrahman, a Royal newspaper here from UAE. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate you on the, all the success uh, I have been uh, covering your uh, two, four, two and then two, four, nine, and then two, five, three. All these championships, I have been following them, and very happy to see you if you see it here. Uh, now, Thank I you. Would like, now I'd like uh, to ask you, after one year of uh, relationship with uh, DCT Abu Dhabi, how do you evaluate uh, this relationship uh, up to date? Uh, this is uh, September, actually started with them in last September, September 19, uh, 2019. How do you evaluate this relationship with them? And uh, to what extent you are happy about everything? Yeah, I've had a relationship with Abu Dhabi. I've had a relationship here for, for, over, for over a decade. Um, and it's always been incredible. Um, obviously, with what's going on right now, the way that these guys have pulled together and worked with us to, to pull off Fight Island 1 and 2, um, I, I, I really can't put into words for you how incredible it is and, and what's been done here. The service has been phenomenal. The, the, um, the, the venue, the, uh, just everything from the flight here till we get back on the flight and go home, you don't get service like this anywhere in the world. We're at the W Hotel here in Abu Dhabi. Um, there's, you don't get better service at, at the Four Seasons. You don't get better service at, you know, uh, you know n name the hotel. This place will kick its ass. It's not even close. It, it, it's, uh, and you ask any of my staff how they feel, and I'm sure much of the media too. You know, if you look at what's going on in the world right now, what we're doing here in Abu Dhabi, there's nothing like it. And the second question is, uh, how do you evaluate the uh, performance of the Arab, uh, Arab fighters up to date? Uh, now we are trying to, to help UFC to promote uh, the idea for the Arab uh, new talents. What do you think about the Arab fighters? Yeah, Arab fighters, uh, Arab, yeah. Arab players. Yeah, yeah okay. So, so once you... Uh, you know, once you're in a market long enough like this, here in Abu Dhabi or wherever it is, not only do you, you know, does the fan base start to grow, but so does the talent. And we're seeing that. Watch what happens here over the next five or six years. There will be serious talent coming out of this region. Uh, this is all for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, sorry. Uh, do you think Adesanya can be the new Anderson Silva of the division? I, yeah, well, I think he's going to be the, the new Adesanya of the division. You know, he's got his own style and his own way about him. Um, yeah, I, I, I think he's going to be the next big superstar here, especially after tonight's performance. Good? Thank you, guys. Have a good night.